Hey, what's up? We are live. <laughs> Let me know you can hear me well. Um, and I'm going to give you some instructions on if you want your painting reviewed in just one second. But in any case, welcome, welcome aboard. Now I'm going to check uh, the stream over on my end just to make sure that um, it indeed runs because I just see it as not running for some odd reason. Uh, here's what we're going to do. Good, I hear it. Um, so I want I want us to do some painting reviews. Now, you all have been sending me. Is that it? No, listen. Ruth said behind me, she's like, I want to go out. So you all sent tons of paintings the last couple of months, and I would love to finally review them. So basically what I did, I prepared everything in advance. And I'm going to go over a lot of them. Now, I actually scrambled just to make sure that... Um, I see the connection is a bit slow. Hopefully, it will improve soon. I scrambled just to make sure that I uh, have a lot of you covered, and I actually will show. So I got <laughs> it doesn't sound like a lot, but I got nine people uh, whose paintings I'm going to show today, uh, and then we'll do another stream soon. Oh, the voice is breaking. Yeah, yeah, I see that. I don't know what it is. Let me try something. Let's remove this for a second. I don't know why the connection is super unstable. Um, it can happen occasionally. Let me just. Uh, try and figure that out for a second. But in any case, try and understand me until it uh, solves itself out. Um, maybe I can just log out and like disconnect from the Wi-Fi and reconnect. But I don't know what will happen to this stream. So bear with me. We're going to give it a try. One second. I'll probably disappear uh, and reappear. So give me just a moment. <clears throat> Okay, how did it go? I think it's still bad, honestly. Uh, but let me test this. Sorry about that. It's been a while since we had this this kind of problem. Okay, yeah, I hear it now. Yeah, but the quality sucks. Quality is really bad. But in any case, um, so I'll show a bunch of your paintings and we'll give review. Now, again, uh, we're limited uh, in the amount of uh, paintings I could get in because one thing to understand is it takes so long just to prepare the paintings because you send me the reference and the photo and then i need to stitch them together and i also yes thank you sujanith uh and and then i need to make sure that you can see them side by side and i need to put them somewhere so i actually had this genius idea to set up a web page and i just put all the paintings there and i can just share that tab with you that web page and we'll scroll through them that's actually the easiest way i found to do this um so we'll go over them as much as we can uh, John, yours got in, so Janith, yours will be next time. I did it just alphabetically, um, but uh, we may have some time for extras. So here's what I want you to do. If you did not send me paintings for review in the last couple of weeks, feel free to send them over now to my email address. That's going to be, uh, I'm going to write it down. It's Liron at LironYan.com. And if we have time around the end of the stream, um, we can go ahead and do that and uh, do some extras, okay? But I promise there will be many more because it is something a lot of people wanted. It is something a lot of people uh, appreciate and it, it's a useful way to improve your skills. I know that, so I want to help you in that regard, okay? So let us get started with what we've got or let's first see in the house. Um, so we have Joanne, I hope you're here. Uh, have you already selected them? Yes, as I explained, but feel free to send them now and I, we may get them in or I'll get them in for next time. Okay, honestly, I think what I'll do, I just, every time I re-realize how long it takes to set this up. So if you send me your paintings now, regardless of if I make it this time or, or the next time, I will start prepping them now so that next live stream I'm prepared with like maybe more, more people, like 20 or more. Uh, but yeah. Uh, hey, Anne, how are you doing? Uh, hey, Dahlia, I hope everything is uh, going well. Hey, John. Uh, good morning, Monica. Thank you, Sujanith. Hey, Nassim, how are you doing? My friend, John, how are you doing? Hope everything is super well with you, too. Thanks for the water quality. Yeah, definitely. It's my pleasure. Uh, hey, White Reza, hope everything is well. Hey, Hanny, uh, just at work, but we'll watch this later. Cool. Uh, you didn't send me, I believe, a painting, so there's no none of yours, unless I missed them, and then my apologies. Uh, John says quality much better. Thank you so much. Yeah, I don't know what it was. Now I have two bars on the Wi-Fi. Before that, it was one. Hopefully, it goes. Now it went back to three. I don't know. Uh, hey, Stefania, uh, how are you doing? I think I have yours 
<coughs> for the next one, you sent me, um, I'm not sure if it was you, but I think a couple of paintings that are based on my paintings, like the horse, right? Uh, I will have those for next time, okay? <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, Henny sent a pick in, would love to hear your feedback, thank you so much. Hopefully we'll get to that. Uh, never mind, do you mean the quality went down? Yeah, sorry about that. I see it now, one bar. Uh, hey, Artman. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Paula, how are you doing? From Yorktown, Virginia. Hey, Amy, how are you? Good morning to you, too. Uh, Nassim, thanks. Definitely, my pleasure. Uh, Tarsicio, how are you doing? It's been a while, right? Um, you're welcome back to the stream, too. So now I can show your comments, of course, using StreamYard. So hopefully that will be more fun. Now, let me try sharing my screen. Um, so we'll start with Anand. Uh, I just want to see it on like on your end, what it looks like, probably a nightmare. Oh, it's actually decent. It's actually not that bad of a quality. Okay. Uh, so Janith asks, is anyone here um, exhibiting their art in World Art Dubai? Oh, I don't know about that. And it says, hi, I followed you for years from your chart. Oh, thank you so, so much, Em. I really appreciate it. Uh, so we'll get started with Anand here. Very interesting painting. Um, now, my my feedback and kind of uh, suggestions are just that, right? They're just suggestions. So you make sure whatever you get out of this, you bring in to your own world and you learn how to implement it in your style. Okay, I don't want you to paint like me. I want you to paint like you. Um, so one thing that sticks out to me with this one, and we're going to talk about values and all of that soon, but one thing that sticks out to me is the colors. Now, what do I mean by that? It's not necessarily how you match every color, though it looks like you attempted to match them. Plus, I don't know if that's the actual image quality because you sent it to me like this, but maybe it looked a bit different, the colors in it. Um, but what I will say is what I like is more cohesiveness in the color. So that means the colors feel more together and that can be done by doing an initial wash that covers everything. It can be done by using fewer colors because I get the feeling that you're either using a lot of different colors or you're mixing a lot and you achieve all of these very subtle grays and greens and, and oranges uh, and purples where maybe mixing less and focusing more on very simple mixes will give you a more together result, right? So that's one thing I would say to improve. The second thing I would say, drawing, there is a bit of work to be done there. There is this tendency to exaggerate things. And actually, Calvin, uh, I don't know if you're here, but later I will show your painting too, and uh, you will see kind of a similar feedback. Um, so there is this tendency to exaggerate the perspective. Now, you actually did a really good job with the bottom most part of the ground. So you'll notice bottom right corner of the painting is where that line with the beautiful uh, flooring meets the corner and goes up. That's relatively accurate. But what you should have done there is slowly and gradually change the angle of the lines. So what you have is a bunch of parallel lines. That doesn't make sense in perspective. Basically, you have this line going. Uh, and let me see if I can show it properly. Okay, So you have this line of the ground like this from the corner. It goes up, and that's good. But then as you go up, it needs to flatten to a horizontal line and go the other way around. Can you see how the wall of stones goes the other way around? It's not parallel. It doesn't continue like that, right? And you still you left it parallel, and that's a problem. So that hurts the way we read the, the shape of that pot. Because when you look at it from the angle you're looking at it, it makes sense that it's open like this, right? But the way you drew it, I expect it to be seen from underneath, from a lower angle. So that perspective kind of messes things up. So one kind of concept to have in mind is that fanning, that fanning action, right? So it starts like this, but then it slowly fans all the way to a horizontal line. You can actually probably see this in the room behind me. Let me try and find an angle. Okay, so now you can see that the, the painting goes like this, right? Now, if we had another painting underneath, it would go like this, and then like this, and then like this, you see? That's the line of the table or whatever it is there. And then as it goes up, it goes like that. See, the angles change. So that's one thing that's very important to have in mind. A lot of people mess that up. Uh, it's very common, but uh, other than that, um, you started really well. I like how you started with the corner, and that's something. Uh, so way to go on that. As for the painting, more darks on the actual thing, on the actual plant, right? I'm missing a lot of darks, generally speaking. The values aren't really organized enough. 
the entire pot should be darker, at least to a more significant extent compared to the ground, right? So what you want to do is just, there's a lot to correct. You go over the painting and the photo side by side, and you put that viewer, like a viewfinder thing, this, and you ask yourself, is this section too dark? Is it too light? Is this section too dark? Is it too light? You can actually fix that. If I were to now have grabbed all of this painting, I could fix a lot of the mistakes, including the drawing, because I would just work over it with darker values. So there is actually quite a lot you can fix very easily. So uh, a lot to fix, but it's doable and you're on the right track. I definitely like that you're trying uh, to be um, representational, right? You've got the shape of that inner side of the vase. You've got, you, I can tell it you're going for it. So that's really good. Uh, just work on these things and you'll improve. Uh, let's see who's in the chat and let me know if this form works for you. Uh, and actually, as we uh, talk, let's move on to Calvin's work. Okay, we're going to look at it in just a second. Uh, but let me know if that type of thing uh, is useful to you, right? Because I wasn't able to put to cram in more people. So there's going to be like nine people, maybe 20, give or take paintings, maybe 15. Um, but hopefully the advice I give you now is relevant to a lot of people. And I also put in the description box a link to the new Patreon tier for critiques. That's something I offer now. So check that out. I think it should be the first link, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, new tier on Patreon. So be sure to check that out because a lot of you have asked and still no, no one joined, uh, probably because I didn't do a good enough of a job actually talking about it. But uh, I added this tier, 30 minutes a month. We can go over like bazillions of paintings and um, as much as we can in 30 minutes uh, and give you proper critique, one-on-one, -on -one heavy stuff, like exactly what to improve. It's not for everyone, but if you're feeling you're really trying and you're improving slowly and you, you can get a serious breakthrough that way. So that's the point. Um, uh, Hashim says, I don't watch anyone on YouTube, but I am watching you first time. Oh, welcome aboard. Thank you so, so much. Uh, how did you find me if you're not watching anyone on YouTube? I'm curious to hear. Uh, thank you for being here. Hey, Joanne, I've sent one. It will appear uh, from uh, Moonsfire. Okay, okay. I'll take a look. Uh, and don't forget to send a reference to, hey, Banani, how are you doing? Hope everything is well. Sujanith, is anyone? Uh, okay, we read that. We read that too. Uh, must do laundry, so I'll watch later uh, in Finland. Cool. Hey, Laura. Uh, let's see. Laura, I think I have your painting for today. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to look at your paintings today. Uh, hey, Calvin, we will look at your painting in just a second. Uh, hey, Paula, uh, how do you submit a painting? Simply email it to me, to liron at lironian.com. Uh, and hopefully we can make it this time again. I don't, I let's uh, have our expectations in place because there's a lot to go over. There's just a lot to go over. I honestly don't think we'll have a lot of time for more, um, but we'll do our best. And I want to give proper feedback, so I don't want to feel like I'm in a hurry for the critiques themselves. Uh, so don't worry, there will be more. For, for As far as I'm concerned, we can do another one next week. Next week's live stream can be the second part of this. And then I'll include a lot of other people. So be sure to send them, uh, Paula, in that, to that email address. Hey, Richard, how are you doing? Um, Kevin, oh, I remember this. The perspective is really difficult and always looks weird. Yeah, so that's a good opportunity, actually. Let's look at this painting. Uh, so what? And obviously, this is work in progress, right? You still haven't darkened everything as much as you wanted to. But I want you to, to notice, and let's see how much you're seeing. Yeah, you're seeing it. OK. I want you to notice how your problem, which I like. I actually like this problem. So you know the rules of perspective. Your problem is how to get the nuances of them. So you know that when you're looking at something from below, the lines converge in that way. So because the thing at the tippy top is farther from us. So the lines tend to kind of uh, collapse inside, right? And that gives you that feeling of distance upwards. The same thing, if you were to look from above below, you'll see this kind of a thing, right? But the problem is there are a few problems with this. You have to figure out what's vertical, OK? So where is that vertical line? Now, as far as I can see, the line in the, so you have that structure to the right, beautiful structure. You have the rightmost side of it right here, and then it goes here, the left side of the arch, right? The left side of that arch is somewhat vertical. In your painting, you already collapsed it to this direction, to, the, to, to your left, to me it's right, because it's reversed in the, because of the camera, but to this direction, you collapsed it too much. What you should have done is use that as your basis for vertical and then collapse that other line like this, you see? Now, you collapse it too much as well. Because everything starts collapsing too early, 
then the, the, the rightmost side of the building is also collapsing way too much. So I like that you know the rules of perspective. Now it's about those nuances. Now, what's the best way to practice this? I've talked about it many times. Do the cube, do the paint, draw a cube. That will really help you. Draw a cube not only from the front, but also from below. And then you'll get that same thing going. It's a very tricky thing to get the 90 degree angle in space, right? So if you have a 90 degree in front of you, that's easy. But what happens when you're looking at it from above or from uh, below, right? It starts to, and the reason I say 90 degrees is the top part of the building is 90 degrees, right? That's very hard. Okay, so practice that. Your main mistake here is just collapsing the lines too much. They go too much in this direction where they should be a bit like that. That's all there is to it. Now, if you look at the horizon line as well, if I connect all your parallel lines, the horizon line ends up being very high. Whereas in the reference photo, it's the lower, I'd say, between third and quarter. Uh, so that's another thing you have to pay attention to. Did you draw a horizon line? I'm curious. And that's, that's a good question for you to ask yourself. If you haven't, do it next time. Draw it in the lower part of the uh, drawing to leave enough room from above, and then do the all of the lines. Okay, hope that makes sense. Let's see who else is in the chat. John, the screen sharing from it's going great. No worries there. Thank you so so much. Hey, watercolor ninja, how are you doing? Uh, hey, Ruthie, good mo uh, good morning. <coughs> Love these critiques. They're so helpful. Good, good, good. Very important for me to make sure that many of you get a lot from it. Hey, Ish. It just actually means uh, a man in Hebrew. <laughs> it's funny. Hello from Manila, Philippines. Love your stuff, Liron. Just discovered your channel recently. Cool. Welcome aboard. Mm. I think I had a serious wave in the last month or so, two months. A lot of people joined. The subscribers didn't go up much because YouTube cleaned a lot of old subscribers, inactive subscribers. But the fact I stayed in around the same number, I think it was a pretty big wave. Paul, I totally understand. Hopefully next time. Yeah, we'll get to everyone. Um, uh, we'll we'll do i think we can get to everyone okay uh, now again i will remind you if you want like proper one-on-one -on -one and you really want to take your uh, paintings to the next level i'm going to write down a message check out uh, the new patreon critiques here link in description uh so we will get to everyone in this format, but again, if you want something a little more personalized, one on one, um, we'll get. We'll uh, that. That's the way to get. Um, so let's see. Uh, N M Ranch Hand <laughs> from uh, Michiana. Not sure where that is. And hold, I missed that the brief. I've sent an abstract, but no reference image. However, I'm sure I'll learn from you regardless whether it's my painting or not. And no worries. Uh, I I'll, I can do um, abstract as well. So with abstract, it's not necessarily representational. So the question to ask yourself is, what were you trying to achieve? The, the, the measuring stick is what's in your head, right? Uh, but yeah. Rajneesh says, hi, Liron sent my painting. It's a line and wash. Love what you do. Thank you so, so much. We'll get to that, hopefully. Sujanit, the cube exercise is excellent. Very, very, yeah, exactly. That building is a cube. All you have to do is learn how to draw a cube a thousand times from different angles, and you will get it. You will immediately know when your line is off. Now, I get that all the time. My tendency is to flatten them. You collapse them too much, uh, Calvin. I actually flatten them too much, so yeah. Uh, Supriya, uh, hi, Liron. I've sent my paintings long ago. Yours will go in the next one. I see her. Uh, let me see here in the folder. You sent me, oh, it's beautiful. You sent me a portrait in a cityscape, right? Yeah, I have it in a folder for the next time. It's beautiful. I absolutely love it. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, to reviewing it too. Uh, Kelvin, thanks. Yeah, happy to hear. Josephine, uh, hello. Looking forward to this. And NM Wrench Hand, uh, yes, cubes. Use a big table and put horizon vanishing points way off the drawing. Yeah, exactly. Or you can just put a couple of papers next to one another and put them. They, they, they're they not always way off. For example, the vanishing point to the right here is actually quite close. It's outside the paper, but it's quite close, depending on the angle. Tazin Halim, hi, Liron, and hello, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, Supriya, we will get to it. And apologies to anyone, again, who we didn't get this time. So let's move on to uh, the next one, which is Christine Gellor, uh, Gellormino. Uh, so you sent me this one. Uh, you mentioned uh, about, I don't remember if you mentioned about the drawing or the uh, going dark enough, um, but there are a few very obvious things you can fix here. I definitely see that you're uh, trying to get the drawing right, which is very important. I have a cookie here. Mm. Off camera. And you actually got it 
really nicely. There is a lot to improve in the drawing as well. But you will get there. Now, one thing I do see, let me zoom in. But one thing I do see, and that's, again, the opposite of Kelvin, the figure in the front, look at the edge of the building behind it. In your painting, it's just vertical. Now, it's actually, it leans a bit to the right, OK? That's the other way around. Because we're essentially looking at the scene from slightly below, and how do you know that? Because it's either a person's point of view or a little lower. It's a bit complex, but if you connect all the parallel lines, you'll end up at a horizon line that's about the height of the neck of that figure in the front. Okay, So you'll get, end up somewhere around here, which means we're looking at quite a lot of the scene from below, and the lines collapse inwards. Okay, So something to be aware of and fix next time. Now, your big thing to work on is the values. The way you push the values on the main figure, that's how you should be brave to push the values on everything. The, the doorway or entrance to the subway to the right, I don't know if it's actual subway or um, maybe just, and let me get rid of this banner. Uh, I don't know if it's actual an actual subway or like a restaurant or something like that. That will be much more well lit if you are brave enough to darken everything around it. So the tree that you drew is dark, but look at the, the building behind it is fully dark. The ground is dark, right? Context. The more you put the light in the right context, the more it will feel accurate. Now, I do see that you made some deliberate changes, right? The light on top is green. You changed it to uh, yellow. I actually like your colors a little more than the original. Uh, these are the types of scenes I usually avoid painting, not because uh, I just don't like them as much for a painting. I just don't enjoy them as much. Um, so. My feedback will be coming from that framework. But I don't like the green light, and I like that you changed it into yellow. I don't know. I think it was deliberate. Uh, but yeah, that, the values. The values here are going to play a major, major role. Now, I can definitely see that you need to work on drawing as well. So, And I see that you put a grid on it, which is great. So if you're going to use the grid method, take it really to its limit and try and get things very accurately in. For example, if you look at that figure, you actually got the legs quite nice. So you see that one steps in this direction, the other is a little to the other direction. But look at the torso area. It's much wider, and it has this rounded feeling, whereas you flattened it, right? So it's a lot of things that are mainly lack of anatomical knowledge, which is fine. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, but if you're going to be using a grid, use it to the maximum and really take a lot of measurements, right? This applies to the figure in the front. This applies to the figure uh, behind. One final note about composition. I feel like there is a lot of, uh, what do you call it, wrong overlap here. What do I mean by that? The figure in the front, I don't feel like it's in the maximum placement to tell the story properly. So what I would either do is add more to the left so that the figure is not in the dead center, which is fine. It's not a rule that you can have it in the dead center. I just feel like it's too close to the bottom. And it overlaps with that edge of the building, which I don't like. So I'd like to separate the two somehow. So either push the figure to the, to the left. It, it's my right, but to the left, right? The direction you're seeing me doing right now. Let me make sure. Let me verify that's what you actually see. To the, yeah, good. good. So to this direction. Or add a bit of that. Just something there in the composition isn't ideal, right? Now, just one last note about the values. If you compare the figure in the entrance, right? to the figure in the front, you'll notice how the figure in the entrance is a little, the head is a little lower. And that's due to perspective. Again, going in the distance, things appear smaller. So you actually got them taller. And all of these small inaccuracies can hurt the end impression. Okay, So that's my two and a half, four, ten cents about this painting. There's a lot to work on, but you're definitely in the right track. Be brave enough to darken so that it's actually dark enough. Everything is dark. Everything but the entrance and a few lights. Everything is dark. And that will make the lights be lit, first thing. Second thing, drawing. If you're going to do a grid, and I don't know if you used it, but I do see a grid on the, on the reference, use it to the max. You actually got the figure in the entrance quite nicely. A lot to improve, but quite nicely. I can feel the shape and everything. It works well. Should have gotten smaller, but I can, I can see it well, right? There's a lot to improve in the drawing as well. The rest will come with time. And so that's uh, what I would say. I hope that's helpful. Um, 
it's not an easy one. I don't paint a lot of scenes like this. So we got Ambi here. And Ambi, by the way, I just uh, now realized that I do know your name, but I just wasn't sure if you want to share it or not. So I just wrote Ambi. Now let me zoom out. Can I zoom out or will it show more than what I want to show? Let me try it out here with the slight risk. There we go. Okay, we can see it a little better now. So I really like this. I don't have a reference, unfortunately, for it, uh, but it's really cute. And I will say something that's really cool. Like you committed yourself to the technique. I really, really like this. If you want to send me the reference, um, feel free to, but I don't even need it in this example because it's just, it's very stylized, obviously. It's not realistic necessarily. It is, it is representational. So if you want to, let's do a theory thing. If you were to want to make this more realistic, it would have been more about the values. What I feel like you have here is very stylistic take on it, which I love. So one thing I really like about this one is you'll notice all of the opaque marks. And I think it's with paint, though it could be something else, right? Uh, with watercolor, I think opaque watercolor that's maybe diluted. Maybe it's acrylic. So I'm not sure, but I love that. That, that kind of illustrative style where you paint, um, you use watercolor, but you also add on top of that uh, opaque paint. Uh, even uh, markers can do that, like uh, Posca markers or Poshka. I don't know how they're pronounced. I never, I can never tell. Uh, so I really, really like that. The eyes are magical. So I really, really love this. Unfortunately, you can't say too much without the reference, uh, but that's my take on it. Again, if you want it to be more realistic in a sense where you look at it from afar and it looks more like the, the actual photo or, or you know the subject, you have to think more in terms of big shapes of value as opposed to small details of fur. Okay, that will be key for you. Uh, but yeah, that's what I can say about that one. I hope that helps. Uh, let's get to Gaurav. But before we do that, uh, let me just look at the chat and give it some attention. Hey again, Tazin, hope you're doing well. Uh, Supriya. Uh, John, really enjoying your new realism course, Liron. Thank you for the help the other day. You got it, John. Thank you so much for joining and being always super supportive. If uh, people don't know, I did po publish the new uh, watercolor realism course. Link in the description box, as always. Uh, Mimi, good morning. Love your critiques. Thank you so much. Uh, Mickey, hi, everyone, and hello, everyone. Elbow cough. Uh, are you coughing? I'm coughing all the time. It's so annoying. <coughs> I have this dry cough. Stayed since COVID. Harsha, how are you doing? A Van Gogh uh, evening picture. Yeah, definitely. It definitely has that vibe. Thank you for the thumbs up, Monica. Debbie, could have not just rotated the whole image to make the the uplines vertical could he not just uh, rotate the whole image to make the uplines vertical um i don't think so well in theory yes you could even rotate and cut the problem is not only are they inaccurate and i'm not sure if you're talking about the last piece or the piece before mb or before before that uh, but what i will say is this not only if you make a mistake that is consistent so for example instead of going like this you go like this, you can rotate. But if the relations between the different lines are skewed as well, even if you rotate relationally, they still won't work. Okay. So usually, if let me tell you this: if you could just rotate it and make the lines um, more vertical, it would still look good. It would have still looked uh, uh, not good, but accurate, right? That's that's what I think at least. Um, Judy. Uh, hi, Laurent, just jumping in now. So sorry, missed the part of his hand. No worries. We're getting uh, to more and more painting, so we're, you're not going to miss. We we are not halfway through. I think there is more. Uh, watercolor Ninja, going very dark in watercolor is both scary and rewarding at the same time. Yeah, and it's one of those things that, honestly, you just have to do once. You just do it once. You feel the pain of it, and you learn how to work with it, right? For example, in Gaurav's example, he did go dark enough in some spots so you have the courage you could go darker in other spots but you have the courage to do that right i'll give you some very specific advice that i think you'll find useful all right just a second hey alessandro how are you doing hey daiji just made it welcome aboard hey carrie this is so cool uh i'd love to submit a hobby painting yeah feel free to again just send it over to this email address on the screen um and uh yeah you can find this email address on my channel too if you missed the banner um, and um, you also say, hope you don't critique the painting I show you. Uh, it was just the first attempt on bed paper. I actually don't have it. I don't remember. I went over all emails and tried to get everything, but maybe I missed it. So feel free to resend something else if you don't want that one to be critiqued. I don't have yours here. Um, but yeah, 
So I wanted to say sorry, but <laughs> it's okay then, I guess. Uh, Gurav did a really, really nice job. So one thing I like is that you actually went for black and white, which makes things a whole lot easier. It makes it easier for me to also look at the painting and, and uh, critique it, right? Um, for you, I'd say this. You go dark enough, you're not scared to go dark enough, right? Uh, the drawing is fairly accurate. There are, of course, some improvements, though, but but it's it's accurate enough, right? Here's the thing that you need to probably work on the most, okay? For edges, I can mention that too, but core shadows. What do I mean by that? You want to make sure that the shadows are separated, or let's say the values are separate into two very clear groups. One is the lights family and one is the darks family. So what happens is if I were to get closer to my light source here and turn my face, you'll see that this entire side is engulfed in a bit of a darker shadow, right? The point where we turn from light, 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 and then dark right here. So in her example, let me try and recreate it. So she leans a little to, uh, to this direction. And then you see the, the forehead. So it goes dark, 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 and then it switches to light, right? In this kind of an angle, right? It switches to light. This is where the shadow starts. Look at how clear that is. Uh, or sorry, I got it wrong. It's somewhere around here. Somewhere between this point and uh, the here, like this, right? It's very clear. Now, in your painting, it's a little weak. So look at what happens here. This side is engulfed in the shadow, right? The rule is very simple. Everything that's in that shadow group, what we call a core shadow, everything here should be darker than anything that's in the light side. So what do I mean by that? Everything in the shadow family, even the lightest value, which you can see around here, right? Around the cheek. The lightest value of the shadows should still be darker than the darkest part of the light. Okay? That's what gives it clarity. And that's what often makes the skin look uneven, dirty, creases, you know, wrinkles that shouldn't be there, right? I can see too much of it here. Don't be afraid to push the entire shadow dark and make a very clear separation between light and dark. For example, this eye is engulfed in shadow. You should darken that white of the eye. It shouldn't be white. It should definitely not be paper white. I know it's very misleading, but I bet you if I sample this eye, and we can do this experiment live, let's try and do that. I bet you if I sample this eye, it's actually not paper white. Uh, let me give it a try here in the reference, that is. Uh, I'm going to try it out. And if I'm correct, I'll share it with you and show you because it, it actually is quite significant. OK, OK, this is magic. So I have to show you, right? So when you look at, and, and everyone be with me here because this is a really important teaching moment. When you look at this eye, it looks in the reference photo, forget about the painting. It looks quite light, the white of the eye, right? Looks light. Let me repeat that. It looks light, right? If you compare it to the background, right? It looks as, as light. Let me show you. So I'm going to sample the color from the eye, and I'm going to pull a line out of that onto the white of the background. And you'll see that's it's a, it's an insane phenomenon. So let me show you. Okay. And even the the white on the right side isn't isn't white, but we'll get to that. And let me pull a few lines from here and from there. Okay. So I, you have to see this. Oops, I saved it on the original file, even though it doesn't matter as much. Let me save it as a new file. Give me just one second, because right now I'm trying to figure out how to um, shadow. I want you to see what happens when we take that supposedly white of the eye, right? So let me upload it here. I'm just going to, um, for ex for a second, remove this. We'll get a photo because this is really important. So I'm going to upload this. It's called an overlay. And we'll get Gaurav's folder shadow. OK, take a look at this. <clears throat> Give it a second. It's going to upload. OK, look at the white of the eye, the eye that's in the shadow. That's the white of the eye. And look at it compared to the light side of the face, right? The lightest value on the dark side should still be darker than the darkest value on the light side. This is the illusion you have to combat. Now, let me bring over 
the screen share and get rid of this for a second and look at it again. Look at the reference, right? You can't, maybe you can't tell, maybe you fall to this illusion, but your brain knows what it's supposed to look like. And when it sees the painting and the painting is not dark enough, it knows it. So you'll notice that the eye here on the painting is just as light as the lightest part of the face, whereas it shouldn't be. Right here. You can see it right here. I didn't change anything. I just sampled the white of the eye, white of the eye, bam, to the side, and look at what it looks like. Okay, so that's the thing I would work on the most, Gaurav. You're in the, you're on the right track. And uh, to be more specific, this reminds me of my paintings when I was in my first year or two in watercolor. It actually, this is very similar to the work I used to do. And I think I can go back and actually find like an old painting that looks very similar to this. Core shadows. Even if you're using the the paper, looks a little a little problematic to me. It looks like it doesn't dry evenly. Maybe your technique's a little off, but it looks like the paper is responsible for that too. Don't let that fool you. Even with the same exact materials, you'll get a much better result. Just because you'll make a better separation between the core shadows and the lights. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Let's see if uh, that's that's working for you. Let me go to the end of the chat. Calvin, the checkerboard illusion makes judging value harder than it is. Exactly. That's exactly uh, what happens. Uh, I showed this in the course, in the watercolor realism course. This exact, of course, illusion, the checkerboard, and it's just it's just life, you know? Yeah, John, it's a crazy optical illusion. Uh, and wow, that explanation with the eye was amazing. Oh, so happy to hear. Let's see who's else in the house. Maz, hello from Oakdown, Oakdowns, Tasmania, Australia. Oh, that's super cool. 1.28 a.m. Man, this is... One heck of an hour, Alessandro. Um, Hank, how are you doing? Uh, hey, from Wintery, Illinois. <coughs> Hope you don't critique. Oh, yeah, we got to that. Okay, good, good. So everyone got that explanation. Maz says hi from Hobart, Tasmania. Uh, welcome aboard, Maz. Uh, and yeah, we can move on to the next one. So, so again, there are so many illusions. That's why I say it's so hard sometimes to work with uh, color because then you have the added dimension, again, of uh of the color itself right uh but if you can just focus on the values you will do uh, a much better job i think but i do have comment to command you gaurav again for going dark enough in some spots like the hair you nailed it you got it dark enough and that's always a challenge so it's not a matter of fear i think it's more of a matter of understanding and not falling into illusions that's actually one of the most teaching i think examples that we had so far so that's good uh, gross, so here, I'm not sure about the name, but I do have the Instagram, so definitely be sure uh, to give it a, a look. Gross, only F, I'm not sure what the name is, but thank you so, so much for sending that one in. To be honest with you, I don't think I have any critiques for this. So obviously, again, highly stylized, but very loyal to the source. Um, we'll commend you for the accurate drawing. It seems like you're really putting an effort into that. In fact, it's so accurate. I would dare say it was like done step by step, probably maybe with a grid, maybe even tracing. I, I trace today, I trace all the time, but it's super accurate. Maybe it's from observation. I don't know, but I love it. I love that you change things, you put your own take on it. Honestly, I'm sure you could achieve like a, just a realistic result with it, but you chose to go that way and actually add more interest to it. So very, very good job. I feel like so here's an example where I feel like even if it was trace, you have a good understanding of uh, three dimensionality um, because everything works. And when people trace or, and again, I'm saying trace and trace, and I don't know if you trace, right? But when people use uh, alternative drawing methods, like I call them in the course, um, you still need to think, you still need to, uh, to uh, concentrate and make sure you display things correctly. And, you, you convey them in an effective way, and you have here. So I'm sure you could probably even draw this from observation if you were, were to work patiently enough. And maybe you have. So as for the style, again, it's just beautiful. I love that kind of work. I love that style where you take something like a portrait or something, you know, with a photo, and then you add on it like the wings here. That's so cool. Uh, the hair... I think, honestly, you improve the composition of the hair. I see this single strand that does this wavy thing that's not in the reference photo, and that's really, really nice. You added the tattoo, you added the clothes, you added the background. That's a lot of imagination. I don't think I'm at the level of being able to invent something like that. That is so nice. And I will say one more thing. If you look at the tattoo, it actually follows the form. So I, I reiterate what I said earlier. I think you have a really good understanding of three-dimensionality. Um, 
One thing that I would personally change, and I say that and take it with a huge grain of salt because it's uh, it's a matter of personal choice. If that's your personal choice, don't listen to a word I say. I personally would have tweaked the colors a little bit, just a little bit, to maybe have one color that stands out a little more than the rest. So it could either be that yellow or it could be that blue. It could be maybe the makeup in the eyes. It could be maybe the wings. Something I would take and exaggerate a little more, make it more vibrant and saturated. That's just me. Um, and you did a fantastic job with this one. I love it. This is th these kinds of works I'm very hesitant to critique because it's so obvious that it's, it's the expression of the person, you know? Uh, so yeah, but just my two cents, hope it helps. So now we have a bunch of paintings by Harriet. And hopefully, yeah, okay, we have... Oh, yeah, so that, so yeah, okay, no, okay, we have a few more. Good, 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 good. Uh, so maybe we'll have, maybe, dare I say, we may have some time for more. Uh, but I'm not, again, I don't want to take it with a huge grain of salt. So Harriet, how are you doing? Maybe you're here, maybe you're not. Hopefully you are. Let's see if there's anything interesting here in the chat again. Hey, Peggy, welcome. Uh, uh, Sujanith, yeah, definitely. That's huge. Thank you, Mickey, uh, for, I'll say thank you if you complimented the paintings. Yeah, Grub did a really, really nice job here. So, Harriet, <clears throat> I really like how you approach this one. I have to commend you for your color matching because it's so good. Um, I don't think I could have matched it as well as you have here. I would probably use my own colors and then would end up looking nice, but not like not like the colors of the reference, which which is just brilliant. You did a really good job here uh, on the color matching front. The drawing is uh, obviously pretty accurate. I do see the same issues from earlier regarding people. And again, it's a challenging subject. Uh, I feel like you fell into symbols. And I think actually that's a great example to show this. And again, uh, put this in the right like context. This is a really nice painting. And I will give you some more critique about the technique, but I want to talk a bit about the drawing. So if you look at the figure uh, closest to the center, right, that kid that's the highest up, um look at the head so you drew the head very round where it's actually more of an ellipse and it's actually closer to the shoulders and you have it a bit more separate so that's the thing i talk about with symbols we have this tendency another concept that, that i talk about in the watercolor realism course check it out link in the description box below if you haven't it's just that because i i do see um I do see these is issues repeat, which is why I talk about them in the course. So that that idea of an eye looks like a simplified thing, right? The head is just a circle. Those kinds of things are the things you want to watch out for. Uh, and maybe if I had a better setup, I'd show you actually how to draw this a little more accurately, but we can do that a separate time. And if you check out the new Patreon tier for the critiques, that's where you can expect to get that kind of a thing. Uh, but what I will say is um, just be careful of symbols. You may want to um, use a grid for a while just to be more accurate. You may want to work specifically on people. And and I know I'm kind of nitpicking the drawing because it isn't a good example of that. Um, but you see like the shoulders, they're just straight, straight hands, two lines for the legs. It's very symbolic. And that's something that everyone does. I do it too all the time. I, I'm And when I say I do it all the time, I mean it. Sometimes people hear that and they, it doesn't register. I do that all the time and then I have to fix and correct myself. Okay. Uh, so that's in terms of the drawing, the the background and the sky and the, the ground I like in terms of drawing. I think you did a fine job there. A couple of things. The values are the most important thing in this kind of scene, maybe together with the colors. But what do I mean by that? This is a very atmospheric scene. So you're looking at it against the light and you can just feel how much the sunlight influences the values. It makes everything look light, even dark things. So if you compare that uh, shoreline in the, in the distance with yours, it's a notch lighter. And that's actually very important. Now, if you look at the water, it's a notch darker. So what happens in these kinds of scenes is the values tend to, I'll show it to you this way. Let's say we have the spectrum of value and that's the darkest and that's the lightest, right? So what happens, let me just focus for a moment. That's the lightest, that's the darkest, okay, light, dark. What happens is, in a scene that's very well lit, you'll have a lot of, of the spectrum. You'll have very light values, very dark, and some in the middle. 
in a scene that is against the light, what tends to happen is all the values tend to bunch up in the middle. They don't go to light, they don't go to dark. So what happens here is the ocean and even sky, you went to light. The land, you went to dark. I want you to bring these two closer together and that will give it that contrajure against the light feeling. That's what happens against the light. Everything flattens, the values become closer to one another. So the dark isn't that dark and the light isn't that light, right? They're pretty close. Um, and yeah, that's, I think, the number one thing to work on here. So the clouds could be darker. The right side of the sea or river or lake, sorry, should be darker. The, the, the highlight in the middle of the water will be much better looking if you darken around it, right? The area around it should be darker. So I'll say that's the key takeaway here. And I will commend you again on the color matching. Really, really good job on that. It's not easy to color match and you did a really good job. You just got to darken some parts, lighten back some parts. I could fix that painting right now as it is with some opaque paint and some normal paint. Don't try to fix it. Don't try to paint over it unless you're very familiar with working with opaque paint and lifting and because otherwise you'll get a mess. Try and do another attempt if you're interested, right? And see if you can get that pattern of light around the sun in the middle. That could be really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, you did a great job. I like it a lot. One more thing I didn't mention, and again, the sunlight, same thing with the light on the water. If you darken around it, it will make it be look more light, right? The composition. I love the fact that you narrowed the sides. The original reference photo was white. You narrowed it, and you narrowed it in a clever way because you kept the figures a bit to the side, not like in the middle, but a little off to the side. That's really good job. And actually have no complaints at all about the composition. So where the elements are, they work really, really well. I would not change a thing, right? It's just the values and the drawing. If you get the values and drawing accurately, you will slowly make this. You'll you'll see if you just paint it like that, pay close attention to the values, match them. You know, I'll even dare say maybe your values aren't that off in the shoreline. Maybe that's even quite similar. What you need to do is darken the sky and the clouds and the water. Now, now that I look at it again, they're not that far off in terms of value. If I look at the shoreline, for example, you see this uh, This is the painting and this is the reference photo, and we look at them side by side, right? So actually, your painting is quite close. The water is what's lacking here, and you have to go darker, and the sky and the clouds. That'll be the main thing, I guess. So you can fix it quite easily. But again, you, you know, your choice. And, and maybe if you like it that way, then I'm so happy for you. Uh, and, and just you can do another iteration or whatever. But I really, really like it. Um, at Ray, uh, hello, how are you doing? Uh, Alessandro, I have just sent you a painting. Thank you so much. Um, Art Ramon paintings. I could use a critique if that link uh, goes through. Um, not sure what you mean by that link. But uh, you can send me an email or you talk about Patreon. Yes, it's the first link, so it should work, I think. Uh, let me just make sure. I usually test my links very, very gently before the live stream. Like, oh, does this work? Good. Uh, so that's that. Um, let's see. The computer's a little slow. Stefania, sorry I understood to mail your lessons works. Next time I'll send my work with my reference. Yeah, no worries. Uh, bye from Italy. No worries. I'll, I can. It's even easier for me to give critique if it's my based on my own paintings. We do have an example of that later on. Uh, I don't remember who it was, but maybe Laura. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, th that's perfectly fine. I will do the the ones you sent me as well. I, I do plan on doing them. Um, Atrey says, these artworks are amazing and it is interesting to learn about your perspective too. Thanks for sharing your art with us and everyone uh, who sent these artworks. Yeah, definitely. It's my pleasure. This is really fun. Uh, Zhao Zhu, uh, I, uh, hello from Shanghai. I actually have yours too. Um, and because, uh, wait, let's see. Yeah, I have it for the next time. So because your, uh, your name is with Z, you got to the end of the alphabetical list. So my apologies about that. Let's see if I have if I remember what you sent me. Oh, yeah, you sent me the Statue of Liberty and this kind of a factory-like thing with a pig flying in the air, right? That's what it is, I think. Uh, maybe it's from <coughs> a movie that I'm not familiar with. But yeah, I'll get to, to yours then next time. 
Sujanith, uh, can you all like this while watching? Oh, maybe we are too absorbed. Yeah, thank you. If you can just drop a like, I always have this thing. Please drop a like, it helps the stream reach uh, more people. I would be super grateful. Actually, let me see. Let me take a break and check how many likes we have right now. Because it's probably not enough. So we have 68 people, 51 likes. I think everyone here can take a moment, drop a like, and it will um, it will really help. So thank you so much. If you can do that, uh, it takes just a second. Uh, and it really helps me. And thank you so much, Sujani. Um, well, let's see. Joanne, yeah, busy listening to your ones with them. Thank you. Oh, and thank you so much, John, for liking. Much appreciated. Calvin, I often use symbols for my figures when I draw background figures, where it should uh, look like a figure at a quick glance. But when a figure is uh, in an eye-catching area, I try my best to work on the anatomy. Good, good. That's good. Uh, and I can definitely see that you're working on anatomy. Um, <clears throat> I did uh, this. I had this lesson with a student that... I showed them how to focus on gestures. I think gestures are one thing that will really help for both the people that are far away and the people that are closer. So if you're not uh, familiar with um, um, anatomy, you can kind of circumvent that if you use gestures correctly. Uh, but yeah, uh, Josephine, why opaque paint to fix it? So yeah, if you would want to make the shore line and the, the kids in the front lighter, you'll, and you want to, you want to lighten it up, it's very hard to lift big areas, right? And you see, especially around the center, the kid in the center is really influenced by the direct sunlight and makes them look much lighter. In the, in the, in the painting, it's much darker. So if you want to um, fix a large area that's too dark, the best way to do this is actually with opaque watercolor. You mix uh, opaque watercolor with... Uh, with uh, some water, you can mix even with another paint if you want to match the color a bit. But I actually show this in the watercolor realism course. It's it's a really interesting technique that I'm slowly getting the hang of more and more. But to fix a big dark area, you can't lift because it will lift unevenly. The best solution I find is to apply opaque paint that will lighten it a bit, right? Uh, Stefania, thank you for the reply. I've sent the horse vents in the bar. Yes, I remember. Good. Well, didn't sign the email. It is a seascape seal painting. Cool, cool. Uh, hey, Jill, how are you doing? Uh, welcome aboard. Let us continue. And I will remind you, there is the new uh, Patreon critiques tier link in the description box. Check it out. So let's. we actually have a lot by Harriet. So let's go over them fast. Same kind of advice I will give you. So we'll notice that the, the mountains and the details in the distance are a little more muted. Again, they're very influenced by the light and shadow conditions. This time, it's not really against the light. I think the sunlight's somewhere to the right, or maybe it's to the left, or maybe it's behind us even. But this is all going to be highly influenced by the uh, by the light. And what you want to make sure is that you take that into account. So those fields in the back, you got them a little more muted. You could go even more muted, right? That middle ground with that yellow fields or crops, that should be a stronger yellow, for example. The grass blades are closer. This is very hard. Honestly, it's a very challenging thing to paint. Um, and the one thing I want you to try and avoid is to paint each and every one of them individually, which you have did here. Uh, same for the leaves up the tree. The main takeaway from this particular painting is try and focus on a larger shape that includes all of the leaves together, because that will make the impression more simpler for the viewer and usually it will lend itself to a more realistic impression now not every single time it really depends on a lot of factors and you may be interested in a style that really shows every single brush mark and in that case do you and continue if you do want to nail that realism a little more that's how you do it and check out my last video i posted on youtube before this live stream it was just on that like how do you take a complex thing and you make it into a simple shape that's together Okay, that lesson about how to see the washes, because then you'll be able to see that this treetop wash is one big shape that's connected together. All of these leaves are going to be painted in a way they're connected. And what you currently did here is you, you deliberately made a lot of them appear separate. And it's actually fine to have some of them separate because they are in the reference photo, but some of them have to be together to simplify that impression if you're aiming for a more realistic impressionistic style, right? Again, it's very important to take into consideration your goals when reviewing and critiquing paintings. 
uh, which is why it's really important again to to hear from you so here we have a cool one by john thank you so much for uh, following my course lessons this is from the how to simplify course the beautiful picture i took of a junction in new york and i kind of put my own flair on it so the bottom example on the left side you can see my take on it let me zoom in a bit so on the left uh, is the reference photo on the right is how I painted it. And I changed a lot of things. I simplified a lot of things. I didn't follow the values. It would be fun maybe to do another iteration of this, this time uh, more realistic. Uh, I think I will do that. And, uh, oh, I thought I saw a message from uh, Laura. Yeah, okay, so you're next. Um, so yeah, now John, whenever you paint based on someone else's impression of course it's like a second-hand impression so you followed a lot of the things that i did but exaggerate them which is fine so the colors on the buildings and on the trees they feel that's the one thing i i have that they feel a little too separate right so if you look at my uh, version yes it's very colorful but the shadow wash binds it all together with a few very simple steps i think i just used indian yellow French ultramarine and parallel red here, or maybe it was a different red, quinacridone, maybe rose. And in yours, every one of them has a very different color, very distinct. So that's one thing I would say, look at the work order that I use. So look at what I do on the first wash, what I do on the second wash, and try and see if you can follow that. So the first wash was again, very light, and you can see that here very focused on just the what you see behind the shadow right then the next wash for the shadows was very muted and very even right i start a bit of yellow then i move into a bit of blue but it's all mixed together the transition is very mild it's very uh um gradual right now as for the cars i will say of course there is a bit of work to be done on the drawing uh, but I actually like the shapes you gave them on the left side, especially it's like really rounded and it looks like a stylistic choice even. Uh, so I actually really like that. The tree in the middle, try and have, so you see, I did have a separation between that and the buildings, but it's a very wet and wet separation. Yours is a very strong separation. You can see the line in the middle. That's a little too much, I think. Uh, again, if you go for a more stylistic illustrative approach, that will work. But if you're really trying to paint it as you see it, I think a looser transition would have worked better there. Now, of course, I gave my own touch on this and I changed quite a lot in the reference photo, right? I changed a lot of it. Um, so I'm definitely uh, not gonna judge you for it. It's just a part of it. Now, let's talk about the drawing a bit more in detail. So, because this is a very common mistake I see a lot of people make. So look at the ground, okay? And look at where I placed the horizon line and not only that, but the lines that lead up to it. So the way I show them is, let's say this is the angle, but you exaggerate that a lot. You see the, the lines that you use on the street, right? That's kind of the angle I used. Then you went like this. What it does, it makes it feel like it's uphill, which is okay, but then the cars don't feel like they follow that because the cars should also be uphill so the perspective of the cars is actually more similar to mine but the street goes a bit too much at an angle so something to watch out for uh perspective okay that's a purely a perspective mistake and um just have to improve your understanding of the horizon line and the lines coming out of that okay uh, let's see what else we have here we said laura is next so laura sent me quite a few of these we're gonna run over them fast and i'm going to try not run over them but run through them fast and i'm going to try and give you my best feedback uh let's see what you're saying here in the chat just for a second uh betty do you use masking to maintain the light uh not usually i just paint around it i did use a few times masking tape which was a fun experience uh ellie glows hey Ron, i'm peruvian but i live in california thank you for all your videos thank you so much uh stefania bye all i have to work in the office thanks for me in italy yeah thank you so much for dropping in stefania next time will be your turn uh elden summers hey all just quickly uh, hopping by to say hi before i have to go to the lab thank you so much for uh hopping on uh hopefully you can watch this afterwards uh shanze uh hey Liron, could you post a few reference pictures for watercolor painting because uh it's hard too hard to find one yeah i'm working on it uh, I remember we talked about it a long time ago of me preparing like a kind of visual library for you. It's going to happen. In the meantime, I recommend you check out the wet canvas forum, uh, wet canvas 
foreign audio, uh, uh, not audio library, because I have the YouTube audio library, reference library. Library, I'm writing it down for you. Uh, so Shanze, check this out, it's very useful. What can, just search Google for this and you'll, you should be able to find it. This one, Wet Canvas Forum Reference Library. Okie doke. Uh, let's continue here. Uh, Laura has quite a few of these. So first off, great work, great values, um, great colors too. You actually match them very closely. I love that. Um, <coughs> here's, because I can I can save a lot of time because you, you did a good job with so many things. We can just focus on the things I think need improvement. The atmosphere and the drawing. So if you look at the, and it's a subtle difference. It's a subtle change. And it's the same thing that John did. If you look at those railways, right? The angle is something like this in the photo and you had it too much at an angle. It should be flatter. Can you see what I mean? This is kind of the, the angle in the reference photo. And then you did it a touch of a steeper angle, right? So that can influence, again, the feeling of that the ground. The ground feels a little kind of wobbly. That makes us lose our sense of balance. So flatten these, right? It's too much at an angle. Go a little flatter, and you're good to go. The train actually follows the perspective really well. So it's only those lower railways. Uh, now, oh, by the way, it's also the ones I was referring all this time to the ones um, to the right of the train and on the side of the road, but the ones of the train, same thing. This is the angle and look at what you did. You went way too steep, right? Go back to the angle you see, okay? One, that's one important thing. The other thing where I talked about atmosphere, so Look at all the buildings in the background. I think this scene would benefit a lot if you went with the, the way the photo portrays them blue, because it really puts them in that kind of aerial uh, perspective, right? Aerial perspective, because the air is full of particles and different things in it. It's not just vacuum. The farther a thing is, the less we see reds and yellows, the more blue it appears, the more maybe even purple, because the I believe the yellow goes first and then the red. So doing that would really bring out that depth feeling, especially because you do have some warmth in the front. One more thing I would say, a bit darker, a touch darker, because the buildings, they actually have a bit more strength than the way you painted them. If you squint your eyes, you will notice that everything in the back should be just a little bit darker and a little bit bluer, okay? I hope that helps. Now let's move on to the next one because we have quite a few. This one I actually like. I, I don't have much to, to say. I think you follow the values really, really well. Uh, and you work monochromatically, so that helps. Uh, maybe some drawing tips, right? Like the the woman, the nose could be a little more like that's more about learning a bit more about the head anatomy and understanding volume. Like the hair should have more volume around the top of the head, stuff like that. But that's really nitpicking. You did an excellent job here. And one more thing I will say, you could go dark on the side of the horse, a bit darker. But look at the, the neck. You got that wet and wet really nicely. Now I can tell you went a bit wet and wet there and it works really well. Way to go. Not too much to say about this one. Not too much to say about this one too. This one's fantastic. I really like it. Let me zoom out a bit so we can see more of it. There we go. This one I really, really like. Um, Laura did a really, really good job uh, with many of these. I love the strength of the colors here. One thing I will say, it's funny enough, if you really want to follow the reference closely, you should probably darken some of the background a bit more. I feel like the turtle is spot on, really accurate in terms of the values. The colors are more saturated than the photo, which I like, because I have a problem with that uh, in my own painting. So the fact that you were able to do that is perfect. I would actually darken the, you, you darkened close to the turtle, you didn't darken farther. And I think you could go a little farther. Now, I'm not saying darken everything, because if you darken everything, then maybe the sides will draw too much attention or maybe it will be you know, too strong. But actually, if you can stretch out the darkening a little more outward, it will look really good. Small advice about drawing. The head is a little too small. Uh, the, the lower part should be rounder and fuller. And you've got this corner, so avoid that. Other than that, really, really neat work. Now let's go over these quickly because I want to make sure we uh, manage to go over everyone's work. 
I love this. And this is, of course, based on my uh, painting. Now, I remember when I saw it initially, I was like, that's better than mine. So one thing I love about yours is that you did, I think you pushed the colors to be more interesting, honestly. You did a really good job with this one. Um, I think you could go a little darker on some of the heads and the necks. <clears throat> Just a touch. But honestly, it looks really, really good. Uh, shadows, really nicely rendered. I like that a lot. And the last one, or not last one, yes, sorry, you have two more. Uh, so I think we can make it. We can do one or two more from email. Or I'll give priority to those who sent in the past, and then we'll do the email. Uh, this I really, really like as well. You said you don't have a reference for this, the last two. So I can judge them based on the reference. I love this one. I don't have much to say, actually. I love the colors, like the... Like the, if anything, you even have loose shapes here in the top right corner. Uh, like this is actually, well, let me zoom it back in, reset. Okay, this is actually loose. I can see it was done wet and wet. So you even have that. What you could do just to give it a bit more balance is on the flowers that are a little outside, you can also make the transition smoother, right? Just a bit. Uh, and that will give it more balance. But other than that, I love that. Uh, and the last one is this. This one I started, I was like, whoa. And it's a shame we don't have the reference photo, but it looks so good. And it's a perfect one to end on at least this part of the of the live stream where we go over them. Because my web page ended. That's all I could uh, manage to edit before the live stream. This is so, so good. Like those sharp lights in the corner, top left corner, that are reflected probably from like, um, what do you call that thing? Like... Um, uh, I forgot the name, but like this roofing that has holes in it. That's just honestly genius. Um, I really, really like that. You did a really, really good job with this. Um, so yeah, that's. I don't have much to say. I really, really like this one. Uh, that that shadow inside the barrels is so neat. I mean, it's not even inside, right? It's just the front. And the outside is beveled, so, so you see a shadow under it. So good. And if you just follow the drawing and get it accurate, Follow the values and get it accurate. The rest will take care of itself. That's really it. Uh, so way to go. Really, really good job on this one. I would actually tr challenge myself to keep it even more saturated in the middle light areas. But I, I don't. I think I actually like this one. I wouldn't change a thing about it. Good job. Very good job. Uh, let's go over a few chat messages if we have any new ones. Yeah, it's really, really good. And thank you so much for your kindness, Sujanith. <clears throat> You're always so nice. I really appreciate that. Thank you, John. Uh, Shanzai, thanks. You got it. Uh, by the way, where can I send um, a pergola? Oh, so you, Mark, so you call that pergola too? Yeah, we call it the same in Hebrew, pergola. We say pergula with a U, pergula. But I didn't know. So cool. <laughs> I'll use it uh, next. I think we talked about it once in a live stream. Uh, and as for Shanzei's question, simply send it to liron at gronian.com. Um, uh, hey, Mon, how are you doing? So let's let's do this. Um, I'm now thinking, should I just take the next person's work that already sent them in? Or should we take someone from the emails? I feel like let's save the some of the other ones Let's do Sujanith, because you're here. Uh, I want to do someone who's here. So Sujanith, uh, we'll do yours next. But if you can just give me one second, because I want to be able to show all of them together, if you don't mind. And you did a fine job with this one. So if you give me just a minute or two, uh, what I'm going to do is connect them all together so that we can actually um, see them. So let me do this and in the meantime i'm gonna vent a bit talk a bit about the new patreon tier uh that i opened so check that out um if you want proper critiques for your paintings uh, if you want to talk to me once a month 30 minutes uh, as many paintings as we can squeeze in that time um and i'll give you feedback on a very very specific feedback to you the things i think you need to work on and honestly it will probably go into me painting a small bit to show you what it should look like, I think. And and it's all done from the frame of, I really uh, want you to develop your own style and not paint like me. Um, so it will never be like, this is how you should paint, but it will always be like, this is my take on it. Uh, take it and make it your own, right? So if you feel like you're struggling or you're not really 
if you practice a lot and you feel like you're not um, making enough progress, uh, I think this one uh, may help you. Uh, so let me just, uh, should I, I'll just show it on the screen maybe. Uh, let's see. Here's what I'll do. I'll remove this for a second uh, and I'll just add that to the page that we're looking at and then I'll refresh uh, the page. Oh, why am I? Okay, okay, that's good. Um, so let's see here. I don't know why it shows it's so weird. <clears throat> I'm going to stop the screen share for a second here. And sorry for the delay. That's exactly the thing I had to do as I was preparing for this live stream. Every picture takes time to edit and crop together and like do this. So uh, my apologies. That's that's it just takes time. Um, I, I didn't want to just throw in all your pictures together. I wanted to um, to make it clear who painted what and, you know, just to make sure. Uh, but I really like the thing you sent me, Sujanith. So uh, we can definitely do that. Here we go. It will take just one more. One or two seconds. Ooh, it's a heavy file. My bad, actually. Uh, but it's fine. I actually made a web page. It's so funny. Just to just to do the, these critiques, I made a specialized web page for you. Uh, it's so funny. Uh, but yeah. Do you, uh, so did you enjoy like the? I did a poll asking what people struggle with. Do you feel like that's a useful thing? I'm gonna use that as a information gathering tool, just so that I know what I should work with all of you um and what i should like next product stuff like that uh i hope that's kind of useful um to see also what other people kind of struggle with and and because i i had no idea and i don't know if you saw it i think many saw it this this poll i did okay so janith i don't know why it doesn't let me drag a text here so i'll just show it as it is so let me do a bit of a refresh and we'll look at yours because i really like it it's funny you send me a painting that i think looks um, extremely good, especially that initial wash stage is just so clever. Um, why the heck does it not show me the painting I just added? Save, exit, come on, you can do this. Mm -hmm. You can do, okay, here we go. Good. No, why won't it show me your painting? Okay. I'm just gonna add it here, sorry. I'm just gonna upload it here, brand, add overlay. We'll just have to do it like this, my apologies. I wanted you to see my uh, face properly, but I don't know why it doesn't show it. It's so bizarre. Here, I need like a hard refresh. I don't know, but here it is. Anyway, Sujanith. So you can't see my face. You can see my eyes. There we go. <laughs> so here's the thing I really uh, find interesting about this painting. Oh, it annoys me so much. Can I do something where... Can't I show both myself and this picture? This is so frustrating. Oh, let's try it. <clears throat> so annoying. How should I show this? Maybe I can show it like this. Let me see here. Give me one second, because this drives the hell out of me. Share screen, share screen, Chrome tab. Not this one, not this one. Damn it. Mm -hmm. Whatever, we'll deal with it. Um, so the leftmost example, this drives me crazy. Sorry, you'll have to give me a second. Oh man, why can't I get it to show? Uh, just give me a second. This is so annoying. Oh, here we go. Finally, finally it showed up. I don't know why. I kept refreshing and it won't show. That never happened to me actually. So yeah, let's get, get rid of this and actually show me my face. And then do screen share. Share screen. See all this time just to show you one painting, but here we go. Good. Now, why do I look like this? <laughs> like that? How do I show? Come on. It's it's technical difficulties time. Here we go. Finally. <laughs> that was annoying. So here we go, Sujanith. 
finally we got to it. And it looks like at this rate, um, I'll have to find a different solution to show how other works. Well, I'll, I can find it. If you don't mind, if you don't mind being patient in the chat, I can show the overlay better. I can do like a transparent picture with just the painting to the side, but it will take a few more seconds. So leftmost side, Sujanif, I love how you did the initial wash. I actually think it's very, very successful. It's one of the best first washes I've, I've seen in a while. I think where things went a little south is actually in the second wash, where what I would have loved seeing is basically everything darker. So what do I mean by that? That strong fiery yellow, the light side of those poles, uh, of those, um, what do you call it, like supporting beams, could be darker with a strong yellow that's actually stronger, I think. Now, the shadowy side, I'd go gray, much grayer than this, because if you actually match the color, you'll see it's a muted, muted, um, let me think for a second. It's like a muted, uh, muted brown, I would say, but very muted, not as strong as you went for it. And you can see it in, in this, in the left, leftmost attempt, right? The, the, when you started with the second wash, <coughs> should be more muted. That's what I would say. It feels to me like there is more green in it almost, more green or blue. So it would mute it. Um, and then stronger, darker, and more merged, connected. I would start from the top and connect so much more of the shadows. So, and, and I have to demo this to really give you an idea, but I would start from the very top wall. In fact, I may paint the front of the top most part strong yellow, fiery yellow, red, like I said, and then combine that completely with the shadow underneath and then combine it with the shadow on the poles, combine it with the shadow on the ground, which you nailed the, the color of, by the way. I want, I want you to focus on that area is actually really smart. So if you look at this center here, that's where you got the, the color accurately. The, not the value, it should be darker, but the color is very close. That color, if you look at the reference photo, you'll notice something interesting. That color is in the sky as well. The sky is much, much darker, of course. So if you can get that same mix and put it in the sky, in the shadows on the building, in the shadows on the ground, and get it dark enough, it will look magical. I think also without darkening the high, the well-lit parts, right? The, the parts that I said could be uh, a little... Let me jump forward. Uh, the parts that I said could be a little... Uh, darker still even in the highlights even without touching them i think it will make it work um so let me kind of conclude this painting for you one um darker on the shadows you could go much darker two more muted color three more connecting points connect everything together and the sky as well as i mentioned should be dark but connect more parts of the shadows together to simplify the impression. And I will give kind of a one, last tip is the drawing. It is a little off if you look at the perspective. The left side of the building, like, okay, let me try and recreate the building. It goes like, how will I do it? Like this. Uh, how could I? Okay, there we go. So it goes something like that, right? The side wall, you got the perspective pretty nicely there, almost fully accurate. That front wall here, right here, it's too much at an angle in the top, I feel like. It, it's This angle is close. That's for the top. It's close, but I feel like the fanning you did isn't accurate enough. So somehow along the line, it got broken. And then there's the matter of the vertical lines. Once again, this is something we talked about a lot today, actually. Everything is skewed a little too much to the left, where it should be a little actually... Hmm. Actually, it's pretty vertical. Most of these lines are fairly vertical. There's maybe just a small collapsing. So, so what you did like this should be more like this. Sorry, like this. See? Not like this? Like this. Uh, I hope that helps. <laughs> I know that was a long... Man, that was a long time just to get the, the painting, so sorry. Uh, let's go real fast on the comments. Harsha uh first come first 
served, I guess. Uh, Alessandro, this barrels of wine painting is so good indeed. Hey, Tat, how are you doing? Kelvin, time uh, for me to go. See you, see you around. Hey, Nancy, late joining. I looked for this live earlier. Not sure why I didn't see it. Yeah, if you are if you don't see the live streams, I think if you go to my channel, you should see them uh, right under the um, featured video, I think. Think. Oh, no, it doesn't. Oh, yeah, it does show. It does show it. So I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. Laura. Uh, thank you, Liron. I'm learning so much from this live stream. Not only your critiques of my work, the train pick I did a year ago, and I have wanted to give it a second try uh, to, uh, I guess, judge or gauge your improvement. Uh, maybe now I'll give it a try. Yeah, definitely. But you're, you're on the right track. There's not a lot to improve, honestly. You're doing really well. Paula, awesome live stream. I sent an email with painting and photo. Um, John, okay, tulips. Yes, very, very nice. So everyone really enjoyed your works. Uh, Josephine, wow, do we all talk to our computers like that? Liron, <laughs> um, email I just sent of one of my old paintings. Okay, Will, maybe you could crop and show one by one. Yeah, uh, no, I can, I can merge them. That's not never really the problem. Uh, the pictures are off slightly in the photos, so that doesn't help. Yeah, so let me try. Let's try and do another one. And this time I'll use a different method. It should work. Um, I just didn't... I have this template for it, and I didn't want to take even just a moment to look for it, but I can take a moment to look for it. If I use the template, it's going to be super easy, honestly. Um, so let's see here. Um, and bear with me. That's the price of us doing a few more. Right, so sorry about that. That's just the price of uh, uh, having to do this. So I think I should have somewhere here, StreamYard. StreamYard design overlay, good. So I should have this and then we'll go to, um, who should we uh, do? Is there anyone who is here? Uh, Stefania went. So let's do one. Let's do uh, one of the ones you sent me. It's going to be random. My apologies again. Um, it's going to be random, but the next uh, the next time you'll definitely, we'll do everything. We'll do everything uh, eventually. Oh, Mon, I see you sent me. Wait, I didn't get a picture with it. Paula, I do see yours. Oh, that's nice. Um, who's, who's still here? I'm not sure. I just want to make sure. That I do someone who's here. Okay, Alessandro is here. Um, well, let's see. I guess a lot of people are here. I just don't know. Um, John. Let's do John's because uh, you sent it, I think, first, like a while ago. Good. Okay, I have a good one. Let's do John's. So I'm going to save it to my folder. YouTube channel. I'm going to read everything I'm doing so that you're not bored. Watercolor. Uh, I, I critique your works. Paintings to critique. Uh, we'll do uh, a John folder. And, and I do promise next time I will be a little more organized so that uh, at the very least... Oop, why is my computer not moving? I think my Photoshop is dead. Don't save, file, new. Let me just, uh, I'll do something different. We'll do this, and then we'll put uh, your paintings on there. Snow scene, which I really, really like. We'll put it in the corner like this. And then... I love how things don't want to go my way when it's the most important, when it's live. That's when things don't want to go my way. I'm struggling with crap I don't struggle with ever. Uh, but let's get rid of this. There we go. <laughs> it's annoying. Uh, let's see. OK. Give me a sec. File. Export. Save for web. Transparent. Save onto John's folder. There we go. Good. Now I'll upload it and we'll be good. This is there's no way to do this while streaming. This has to be done. Um, this has to be done in advance. Let's see if it works. And we'll get rid of this. 
And we'll add this. There we go. We can see John's work. Very, very interesting. Now, I didn't see the reference, actually, now that I think about it. Um, but yeah, excited for a live stream. Uh, here's a picture of snowy scene. The sun was starting to set. was making the trees glow. Yeah, that's a really, really cool take. Um, so what I really appreciate about this painting in particular is how it does go for that, uh, like, beyond just trying to paint the shapes and the values and everything. You actually try to capture the atmosphere, which is really, really neat. Light tends to actually do that. So you'll actually get more colorful and saturated trees in the sunlight. Which is a really cool effect. Um, let me think about it. Because it's so, it's such a personal take on the subject. It's actually a good question what I would change. One thing you could try and work on is try and have more togetherness in the, in the foliage. So if you can, let me look at it full size on my end. You can exaggerate the saturation and everything and still have them a little more blended in the first wash. Uh, and that will give it a bit more of a unity. And then you can add with a dry brush some of the literal trees like you did on the left here, very blue above this, very blue trees that look really, really good. Now, one common mistake that people make is to exaggerate different curves. So what you see behind these two structures, right? You have one closer to us, one farther. Behind them, that line where the forest begins, it's very rare for the shape to be this curve. Now, it may be curved. I don't see the reference, but it's very rare for it to be this curved. So I would actually uh, go back and check I think it may be flatter, and, and that will read a little better because the farther things are, the more they tend to just kind of straighten out to the mean kind of in a way, just go flat, okay? It's very rare. This has to be like a hill for it to be this curvy, uh, just what I think. Uh, there is some work to be done in terms of the drawing. I think a bit of accuracy in, the, in how you portray these um, boxy uh, structures, right? Um, just to get the perspective a little more on top of it. Uh, one more compositional note, I will say. I feel like, and by the way, look at the light comes from in front of me. Look at how, again, that glare makes me look lighter here. See, that's the effect of light and shadow. And we've seen it with the kids earlier. Remember that the kids in the middle with the lake or ocean, that, that's a really important effect to get. Um, if I had a stronger backlight right now, I would all be darker. But this piece of hair that's lighter, that's a really important effect. Now, here's what I'm missing here. This fence, something has to happen underneath it. What do I mean? Those poles that are stuck in the snow, maybe there isn't anything there. And I'll have to, again, see the reference. But to me, it doesn't make sense that there isn't some kind of shadow or some kind of they blend a little smoother into the, the, the snow, you know, that that changed like the, the line, sorry, the line, and then it ends abruptly. That's something that can be improved, right? Even if you just make the transition smoother, it will, I think, make it look a little more believable. Now, there is the idea of it's so much in the front. It could be a focal point, which is why you want to attract the viewer's attention there. But when you look at it, I don't think that's the focal point. I think the focal point is the trees, the structures that lead to them, right? Um, so that fence, I wouldn't want to pop as much. Now, one more thing you can do here. We talked a lot about vertical curves, um, diagonal, how diagonal they are, right? You go this way, it should be that way. This is actually a great opportunity to put in the fence. Instead of having it like this, have it go into the distance. Have it go like that into the painting. And this is actually something I'd like to show you. This is actually important enough to show you what I mean. Because, and I, you probably understand, but I just want to make sure that it's clear. So I'll just recreate this, the, the, the gist of the scene because you want to have some kind of a lead in. So you have a structure here and another structure behind and the trees like that. And this would actually be, and sorry, you'll be able to see in just a second, great opportunity. 
put something like, like that, I think. Something like that for fence. Instead of it being flat and kind of straight in front, why not have something lead you into that first structure and then the second structure and then the trees? And the way I thought about this was this actually leads in very well into the painting. But what I am missing is that lead into that first structure. So you see what I mean? So with a bit of thought about the composition, look at how I flattened the tree line, right, at the back. With just a bit more thought to the composition, you can make great things like, okay, it feels like it goes in smoothly, right, into the painting and really pulls the viewer's attention. So these are a couple of things off the top of my head. Uh, I really like this one. I think you did a good job. I had another note that I completely forgot um, when I drew this. Oh, uh, what was it? Yes, yes, horizon line. If you want to make this scene more interesting, try lowering or bringing up the horizon line. Right now, it's just almost center. Make it a little more interesting. Make it a lower angle. And it's very easy to do. I can do that for you as well. You just draw it lower than you actually have. And you put the structure in. Let me show you how much more dynamic that looks. And then you have the fence that leads, leads you in. And then you can even show more of the tree. So something like this, the smaller one. You see the comparison? And that could be a more interesting composition. Sorry, I think John went, but uh, hopefully you got something out of it. Um, so yeah, let's go over the chats real fast and see. Uh, John will have to see this later on. Um, let's see, where were we? Here's the face. You crop and show uh, the pictures uh, are off slightly in the photos. Yeah, I wasn't sure about that. Uh, and oh yeah, sorry, sorry, everyone's here. I know. Now <laughs> uh, you will be in the next uh, video for sure. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you got it, Sujanith. Uh, so happy I could help in a way. Uh, Linda says, your critique is great. Way to teach us, uh, all of us. Happy to click the like. Oh, thank you so much. Wish I could do multiple likes. Thank you. Uh, Daiji, one day, once I muster up the courage, I'll send you uh, the little uh, watercolor painting I made. Yeah. You can send it. You can send it over to me and ask me not to not to critique it. Um, if you want just me to see it. I'm curious to see it. Um, if you want to. We can start there and then I'll be like, are you, are you kidding me? You have to share it and then maybe I'll convince you. Uh, Josephine, is there a way for us to format and size our painting to make it easier for you to edit? The one thing that will help is if you can already put it for me side by side. That's the one thing. If you can send it as one photo, but then I fear that you'll it will be hard and maybe the resolution will be too small. So if you if it's hard for you, you don't have to. But that will really help just to have it already side by side. Irene says, uh, great critiques. Thank you, Marjorie. <laughs> love watching all the paints done by these talented budding artists as they come to full bloom. Yeah, it's just beautiful. And Christine, thank you so, so much uh, for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Really great live. Thanks, Iran, and all for sharing. Thank you so, so much. Um, I, the super chats are amazing. I really can't thank you enough for that. That's really awesome. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, Chris Barber, good morning from California. Better late than ever. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Helmet family says, uh, how can I send my work to you? You can use this email address, Lironian.com. Uh, and next time, I promise I'll be more prepared. So I'll actually work on this during the week before the live stream and make sure I have like a web page with everything together. And we will get through as many as we can, including the ones you sent me today. I promise I will do that. Everyone who sent me one today will get three or paintings. Okay. It's just a lot of work. And, and again, I have to apologize for not planning ahead of time enough. So we didn't get to go through what I think is enough, uh, but it's actually quite a lot. Kanchan and Diran, how are you doing? Hey, Liran, can the focal point be in the background, as in this case, the trees? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, as I mentioned, it could be the trees uh, for sure. The one thing that leads you in is those structures, and then you're attracted to the trees. One more note, as you say this for John. Uh, oh, good, John, you're here. The curve, oh, I see that. Uh, also, good tip on the fence shadows and those tips about the composition would really sell the scene. I appreciate it. Yeah, you got it. I will add one more thing to that. Notice how you put your structures to the side of the scene and they're kind of of even length from the edges. I would do something like bring one of them in 
maybe the smaller one, bring it more towards from here to here, maybe. Maybe somewhere around here. See? And that will that asymmetry will pull the viewer in, right? Because what you want them to do is this kind of a thing. They start, they start here, and then they go here, and then they go here, and then they go here. So if you can narrow that, you see, and pull them into the center by bringing this closer, I think that would really work well. Let me make this fix here, actually. Ruth is barking in her sleep. That's so cute. I don't know if you can hear it. It's the funniest thing ever. She goes in her sleep. It's so funny. Like this. See, even just a small difference could really um, do a lot of good. <clears throat> I'd probably bring it in even more. Uh, that's a, that's a part of the painting process. Like I could take a picture and paint it five different ways by moving the elements around. And when you're experienced enough, you can do that. And you paint the the thing you moved exactly the same, just a different placement, right? So it's another thing to have in mind. Think about a viewer always and what they see and you know what they think about it. Uh, but yeah, John, I'm so happy I could help. Uh, Deborah says yes, excellent leading line to the shed. Thank you. Uh, Levin, pull me. Hello, I sent in some watercolor flowers. Cool. We'll see everything. Uh, White Rezal Iran, I just sent you something if you wish. No problem if you can't. Uh, today, just back from vacation, I didn't know uh, about the live stream. Yeah, no worries. Uh, John, awesome painting paintings today, and thank you, Iran, for critiquing. Uh, great live stream. Thank you so, so much, John. Uh, why are watercolors so hard to use? Um, I think they're very easy to use once you get the very basics of them, and they get so fun and freeing once you do. Uh, it's the best medium. I don't want to work on anything else but watercolor right now. Uh, just pencil and pen because I like those, but not not like anything else, any medium, uh, painting medium. Um, but yeah, it's it's all about the timing. That's why it's hard. Uh, it's really important to. The process is very time sensitive. I would say more than other mediums. That's the thing that makes it hard. If you learn to work with it, it can actually be very chill. And I've shown this to students a lot in the past. If you really use enough water, use enough of an angle, start small with a small shape, you can do quite a bit and take your time. And it gets more fun. Um, check out a frustration-free watercolor course, anyone who hasn't. I know most people have, but uh, if you haven't, check it out. Link in the description box too. That's perfect for that. Um, helmet family, should we use rule of thirds? Uh, yeah, uh, try it out. And if you like it, like this, the rule of thirds, again, could really help here. Lower the horizon line, move the shed a bit inside. Yep, yep, definitely. Uh, freaking more. And Zaylee Ron, been listening in the background, just came to say hi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Delia, this live stream was great as usual. Thank you for your time. You got it. Uh, best book according to you. Uh, for watercolor. Ooh, I have no idea. I don't have like a best book. It's very hard to tell. <clears throat> Because all of them are very different. I like Nita Engel's one, which I reviewed on the channel. Other than that, I didn't have really good... Like, if you want a good painting book that isn't about watercolor, I'd recommend this one. And I, I reviewed this one, too. I just love it. This book. <laughs> Drawing Scenery, Landscapes and Seascapes by Jack Ham. That one will help you more than any technique book. Because, and let me remove this for this book will be more useful to you than an actual watercolor book because it talks about composition. That's the most important thing. So let me show you like tons of ways of arranging wrong overlaps. Um, plenty of examples of how to render stuff. Yes, it's more for pencil. It's more of a graphite pencil chalk kind of technique, but it goes into such depth about composition you find like a good example. Look at these tons of explanations on that. That would benefit you, I think, more than a technique book. Because techniques you can learn by using free videos and you'll do good, you know? So I think that that would be a better suggestion, honestly. Something like that. A really good, solid book with strong reputation on drawing and composition. 
As Sandra says, I have to go. Bye. See you soon. Bye bye. Uh, and so much information. Thank you so much. Can't wait for next time. Uh, John, it just got here. Sorry, late. We'll watch again and upload. Yeah. And I think we can move towards wrapping this one up. Uh, my voice is getting tired and I have this, I feel the cough creeping in. Still not 100% after the being sick, but uh, close to it. Close to it. I'm pretty energetic. So just to do a quick, quick uh, wrap up, and Kanchan says, that seems interesting. I believe I need to work more in composition and drawing before the colors. Yeah, planning, thinking, doing a little, like a thumbnail. This Doing this takes 10 seconds, right? Trying it out on dry before you go with the wet water color. That's very fast and will bring you much better results. Uh, is college an important collage or college an uh, important step to take if you're an artist to get critiques and stuff? Um, no, I don't think so. Honestly, I don't think so. Uh, it's not important. Uh, oh, I just bought that book, says Anne. Oh, cool. Uh, hey, again, uh, Nassim, hope you're doing well. So uh, we're going to wrap it up. Now, I do want to mention once again, if you want to do this kind of a personalized critique, uh, check out the uh, new Patreon tier. Um, so it's going to be 30 minutes, and then we can go through a bunch of paintings. Everyone who sent me paintings today, I'll prepare the same format we did the first time, the web page. I'll share my screen. I'll have everything there. I think we'll do like a huge, like three hour live stream. I'll have to clear the schedule because we actually have plans tonight. So um, I want to save some energy, but uh, I think we'll do like even more than two hours if necessary. And we'll go through a bunch of them, right? Um, I will improve the format in a way that I can actually draw and show you on top of the things. I don't know exactly how to do that right now. Um, maybe I can share a tab of the browser with an online kind of app that lets you draw on top of the in the browser window, in the Chrome browser. Uh, we'll figure it out. But I'll find a better solution. Uh, but yeah, just really fun. These are very fun. So, uh, so thank you so much for sending a bunch of them. I have nine more people from the next round and then everyone who sent me now will add you as well if you want to share with me something privately not for critiques please just be sure to mention that to say uh, if you can give me private critique not for the video um but yeah otherwise it's, let's, let's just go for the video send a reference photo as well if you can because that will give you better critique. But you see, we can do quite a lot, like John's painting. We can do quite a lot with just the painting, because there's a lot to always to talk about techniques and stuff like that. So I do want to thank you so much for tuning in. Check out the links in the description. New Patreon tier, uh, new watercolor realism course. A lot of the concepts we talked about today in that course, they're all covered there. Uh, Frustration-free watercolor course. If you have trouble letting go and really enjoying the painting process, if you need to work on your drawing, be sure to check out either my Draw Anything course or my How to Sketch book on Amazon. You can find it. Just search How to Sketch, Liron. You'll find it. That That's another useful one. It's like a heavy, heavy 360 pages kind of book. Um, lots of examples, lots of processes. Uh, the approach there is very like draw it as you see it. So I have been, I have become, become more elegant with time in my drawing skills, but I think it will give you a lot, especially if you just want to draw for the purpose of painting. Uh, so thank you so, so much. Really appreciate you being here. Uh, thank you, Nassim, again. Thank you, John. Thank you, Helmet family. Um, will you review... Uh, will, when will you review the Profulsa uh, one? Um, I think I have it on my list, on my short list. Paula, uh, very new to art. Never did any form of art until three years ago. Cool. Everyone asked why I chose the most difficult medium. I've just been drawn for, to it. Yes, same for me. Exactly the same. Hey, Javi Jav, hope you're doing well. Uh, what do you mean, no more stream? I'm not sure. Hopefully it works still. Deborah, thank you so much. Thank you, Paula, for being here. Um, will you be doing this on a regular basis? Where can we sign up? So yeah, you just follow the link in the description box. It will say um, a new tier on Patreon where you can get your uh, paintings critiqued. That's if you want it on a regular basis, and then you do the do monthly donation on Patreon. But send me a painting to my email address, which I've shown you earlier, and I will get these like in the maybe next week's live stream is going to be more reviews. Right. Um, maybe I'll do a. I I think I'll do a live stream. Um, and, and then we can do this every once in a while. Um, if you want that consistency, it's going to be Patreon. But if you don't mind sending it and waiting for the future, then that's your best option. Just email it to me and I'll add it to the next uh, live stream. So thank you so, so much. I'm going to wrap it up and I will talk to you again soon. And I will see you in Saturday's video, not live, but a video. Thank you so, so much once again.